evening and welcome to this special broadcast tonight on Monday evening. Have a, a very special guest that's going to jump on with us. So many of you have written and you have asked me to address the current conflict in Israel and some of the issues surrounding it. So I thought that I would uh, invite my great friend Scott Volk onto the broadcast tonight. I have known Scott for a number of years. Um, his ministry is called Together for Israel. Uh, he takes teams to Israel every year. He is well connected on the ground, uh, serving uh, the believers in Israel. He's serving the Jewish people. And I'm really excited about what God is about to speak to us tonight. So go ahead and jump on. Please let us know where you're watching from. I'd love to greet you as you jump on the stream tonight. And as always, this this is going to be uh, definitely a stream you're going to want to share. Uh, you're going to want to tag a friend. Uh, I believe that we are going to bring some biblical understanding and insight into God's heart for Israel, uh, how it relates to the end times. And we want to really share our hearts about Hamas, about the Arab, the Palestinian people. We're going to make some things clear tonight on the broadcast. So make sure that you tag somebody or after the interview, uh, pray and see who you can send it to. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Scott, Scott onto the broadcast. Well, Scott Volk, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Jeremiah, what a privilege. Thanks so much for having me. It really means a lot, bro. And I look forward to our conversation together. Yeah, amen. So obviously, you know, we're right in the middle of intense times in the earth. And uh, Scott, I was just praying, asking the Lord, you know, how can uh, our ministry uh, not only help, but so, but also bring, um, you know, insight and understanding to uh, the American church concerning Israel. You know, I kind of grew up in a church culture where we all knew to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but that's really about it. And as we're watching the news and, you know, I've been talking to a lot of church leaders and even some saints, there seems to be um, either this, you know, maybe heart of prayers going out for Israel, but I'm also running into what's known as replacement theology where there's almost either there this ignorance or I don't I don't know if it's I would go so far to say it's anti-semitism but there's very little concern or understanding about our gentile connection to Israel and obviously Scott you're Jewish so I know that you can like bring a lot of great insight here but can you just talk to us a little bit about replacement theology and your understanding about Israel's connection to the church? Yeah, absolutely. There is a, um, I, I would call it a lie out there that talks about the church having replaced Israel. In other words, Jeremiah, every promise that God made to national Israel in the scriptures has now been replaced or superseded. Some people call it supersessionism. I shouldn't even be saying that word because that's more of a theologian word, and I'm not nearly that smart. <laughs> supersessionism, the church has superseded Israel, and every promise that God made to Israel now belongs to the church. Unfortunately, there's some beautiful God-loving people who uh, believe that the church is now Israel. They wouldn't be anti-Semitic, but throughout history, bro, there has been a diabolical plot to wipe Israel off the face of the earth because the Jewish people in Israel were called Christ killers. They killed our Messiah. And people with crosses, even on their shields, the crusaders marching into Jerusalem to rid Jerusalem of Muslim infidels and pack Jewish people in synagogues and burn it down while singing a Christian hymn. This is history absolute history. Um, World War II, cross-bearing men going to church on Sunday, incinerating Jews on Monday. So for Jewish people, the sign of the cross many times has been a sign of, uh, of anti-Semitism. You, you must convert or die. You must be baptized or die. And a lot of that has been fueled by the fact 
of the lie that's saying that national Israel and the Jewish people are no longer God's people. Somehow, all the blessings that God had bestowed and promised to Israel now belong to the church. Unfortunately, all the curses because of Israel's disobedience doesn't come to the church they still stick with Israel. So replacement theology, although being held by very, very smart, intelligent, God-loving people, has been a door that has opened for the enemy to come in and use it towards a vile hatred against Israel. And I would just say this, Jer, if, if, if God made a promise to Israel that was not based on Israel's faithfulness to God, but rather God's faithfulness to Israel. If he could change that promise to Israel, he can change the promises he made to us as the church. He's a gracious, loving God who makes promises and keeps covenant to a thousand generations. If God's promises to Israel are no longer applicable today, then what should we say about God's promises to us and the church. He might find someone else down the road when the church itself is unfaithful to him. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great explanation. I think Romans 11 uh, is a pretty clear biblical text as well. I mean, I tell people God is pro-church, whether that's, you know, Gentile, he's pro-Israel. I don't really know why we need to kind of feel like we we have to divide and conquer. Uh, we're right. certainly grafted in, but God's promises remain the same for Israel. And I know for me, it, it really took uh, my wife and I, when even when we were dating, we, uh, as part of our university study, we spent a semester in Israel, uh, studying there. And as you know, I've been back 10 times now. Amazing. Scott, your, your ministry is to Israel. I, I don't know that I, it ever really came alive to me in terms of God's heart for his, his people, the Jewish people, and the burden for their salvation and the veil, uh, you know, being removed. It never really became real to me until I spent time there. And yeah. I just think a lot of, of people, it, it, again, I think at worst it's anti-Semitism for sure. There's a hatred uh, for the Jewish people. I think a lot of just American Christians I'm running into, it's just ignorance. They, they don't even have any kind of understanding at all. Um, and then thirdly, I just think uh, it, it's out of sight, out of mind. So when we're, we're watching uh, these just atrocities happen to the Jewish people, I mean, I think some of us from a biblical understanding, I mean, we know that there is intense satanic hatred aimed toward the Jewish people. And so, you know, it, you have to, we're, we're viewing that from our understanding from a biblical lens. So to us, this is more than just a random uh, terrorist attack. I mean, you're talking about in, in terms of numbers of victims from the Holocaust uh, up until now. Th this, these are the most Jewish casualties since the Holocaust. So, I mean, th this is a this is a major deal. Um, and and then Scott, I mean, I love I love for you to maybe just talk a little bit from your perspective, you know, something that I'm, I'm also running into is like, I, I think that you would agree. We, we are pro humanity, you know, right? Like whether they're African, right. Palestinian, American, like we're, we're not here or, or people that love Israel. Like we're not in any way saying we hate Palestinians. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're talking about, a terrorist organization that is evil. They're inspired by the devil. They're targeting not only Jewish, but it, it appears like they're probably don't even care about their own people. I mean, can, right. can you talk to us? What's your understanding from a Jewish perspective? Like what's your heart with what's happening in Israel? Well, well here, here's the deal from, from my perspective. And by the way, I'm a 58 year old Jewish man that didn't have this perspective until my mid forties, when God opened my eyes with regard to his promises for Israel. So if I, as a Jewish man could have been so ignorant 
of God's heart for Israel, how much more those who weren't even have no affiliation to Israel or the Jewish people. This conflict started in the garden when Satan seduced God's creation to partake of a fruit that would introduce death to this earth. And because God is not a God of death, he's a God of life, he put into plan an action-packed series of events where death would be demolished ultimately by his son, Jesus. So God was looking for a people. He prophesied over the serpent, Jeremiah, in, in Genesis chapter 3. He said, one's coming that's going to crush your head. And when God found that man, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, and said, through you, Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all of a sudden, the children of Abraham, the people of Israel, the Jewish people were marked cross hairs over that nation by the devil himself because he knew that his ultimate ruin would come if God's promise to Abraham would be fulfilled. So once he made a promise to Abraham, you know, uh, the chosen people became the hunted people by the devil. And I, I, I can flat out guarantee you anytime God chooses something, the devil's going to come after it. Uh, Proverbs says the adulteress hunts the precious life. So Abraham is chosen. And then what do we see in scripture? It's, it's, it's a story through scripture and a story through history. You've got a diabolical plot to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Pharaoh, Haman, Herod, all these people in scripture and many others, Israel should be wiped out. Israel should be demolished. And uh, it's, it's quite remarkable to me that the people who've come against Israel in the scriptures ended up finding their own end many times at the very scheme that they had against Israel. Pharaoh wanted the children of Israel drowned, he drowned. Haman wanted them hung, he hung. Ultimately, ultimately, this is not a battle against uh, Arab and Jew. It's a battle against the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God because God made promises to Israel that will never be retracted. He made promises to Abraham, an unconditional, um, unilateral, everlasting covenant. And those covenants that he made are good to a thousand generations. So I view this as the enemy's desire to wipe Israel off the map. And we now, as God's people, it's not an issue of standing with Israel or standing with the Palestinians. I'm, I'm fond of saying this. If you look at Israel through a political lens, you're going to end up hating either Arabs or Jews or both. If you look at Israel through a biblical lens, you'll end up loving both Arabs and Jews. Let's choose the biblical lens. What does God's word say? What, what does it say in here? Uh, so many of us have, we're scrolling through social media. We're getting everybody's opinions. We're watching, you know, broadcast news on, on cable news and we're getting everybody's take. Why don't we just go to the word and look at what God says? Because if we do that, I flat out guarantee you our heart towards the Palestinians, our heart towards the Jews, our heart towards the Arabs, the Chinese people, the American people is going to be a heart of love because God would that none would perish. For God so loved the world that he sent his son, but he sent his son through the womb of a Jewish woman and the seed of a Jewish man uh, to confound the nations. And we have got to carry the Apostle Paul's heart where Israel is concerned. And we have to carry God's heart. We have to carry Jesus's heart. We have to carry a kingdom heart where Israel is concerned and where the nations are concerned. I'm sorry. I feel like I just rambled on a little bit, but I, I hope that was clear. Yeah, no, I, I think that's excellent. You know, for all of our, those of you that are watching, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, Scott, I, I really appreciate the clarity um, that we're having on this conversation. Yeah. Uh, I, I almost want to say, all right, folks, you have it. You know, we're, we're <laughs> you know, we are absolutely saying that we are pro the love of God for yeah. the world, whether that's Arab or whether that's Jewish, whether that's American. But yeah. we're also saying that you cannot deny from a scriptural standpoint the promises that have been made to Israel you know, Scott, I think 
you know, those of us, I, I look at, you know, what we're doing here at the Ultra Global and we, and I know you probably feel the same, you know, your ministry together for Israel, which by the way, if you're watching and you don't know Scott Volk or his amazing ministry together for Israel, I highly recommend it to you. But, you know, some of us, we, we have been positioning our ministries to this focus of, you know, you're obviously taking people to Israel many, many trips every year. You're involved, uh, not just taking people, you're helping to fund what's happening on the ground, which by the way, I'd love to hear that at the end of our conversation or, sure. you know, for the ultra global where we're, we have a discipleship school where we're training and equipping people on the eternal storyline. And I think something we often say is like, we're, we're trying to help Americans realize like we are not the center of the universe you know, Jesus is not going to come and set his feet down in Washington, D.C., right? On. He's going to come and set his feet down on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, coming through the Eastern Gate. I mean, there, there's so much that that is wrong with our American gospel that when events like recently of what's happening in Israel we some people well i guess we're supposed to pray for them but too many people they don't even have any biblical understanding because they, it's it's a consumeristic it's all, right. what what can the gospel do for me and we're disconnected from the eternal storyline that god is so desiring to set at the center of this generation you know I, i've been telling some pastors we have a prayer meeting on Monday nights at the church for the salvation of Israel. It's mm -hmm. the number one attended and it, and it didn't just happen within the last two weeks. It's the on. number one attended prayer meeting we have over the last year or so, but it's come through discipling people in the eternal storyline. It's come through taking people to Israel. Um, it, it's come come through connecting, having speakers like you come in. So I just even want to maybe make an appeal on the broadcast tonight that you could be a church leader. Uh, you could be a fivefold minister and you're like, yeah, yeah. I need need to gain more understanding, more biblical foundation concerning Israel and the eternal storyline. And I, I just think conversations like this, Scott, are really going to help point people in the right direction. A hundred percent. Jeremiah, when you think about it, um, in Romans 11, uh, Paul says, I would, I want you to not be ignorant or uninformed of this mystery lest you be wise in your own eyes or conceited, conceited, proud. When we don't grab hold of the mystery of Israel, like you said, we become me-centered. It's all about me. It's all about what we can build. When Israel becomes central in our thinking, not because they're a better nation than any other nation, but because God calls them his firstborn son, because God chose Israel as the nation through whom his name can be glorified. If we leave that important piece out of our theology, out of our prayer meetings, we're missing a destiny that God has laid out for us to walk into. I would that you would not be um, ignorant of this mystery, lest you become wise in your own conceit. Look, the devil will do everything he can <laughs> to keep us really, uh, really happy about going to church, men's meeting, women's meeting, children's meetings, you know, youth groups, this, that, all these causes, and they're all good, Jeremiah. We should care about them. But there are some causes that are ultimate because Israel holds the key to world redemption. Israel holds the key to Jesus, Yeshua, returning. Jesus, when he wept over Jerusalem, said, you will not see me again until you cry out for me and say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So if, if the Lord's return is dependent on Israel crying out to him and wanting him back, we as the church, those who bow our knee to Jesus are called to 
Hasten that day by provoking Israel to jealousy. That same chapter, Romans 11. Salvations come to the nations. If you're not Jewish and, you're, and, you, and, and you recognize Jesus as Messiah, one of the purposes in our salvation is to provoke Israel to jealousy. Unfortunately, through our history as the church, small c, we've provoked Israel to anger. I believe that this is the hour and this is the time, not just because Israel is in an extremely very, very volatile position right now, but even after this time of crisis is over, we as God's people are called to do something where Israel is concerned in our hearts. Open up our hearts, Lord, where Israel is concerned. But when you look at scripture, Look what Jesus said, Jeremiah. I've come only for the law sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus, that's out of Jesus' mouth. Jesus says, salvations of the Jews. God calls Israel, my people throughout the scripture. Yes, thankfully, now we're all the people of God. But there was only one nation that was his people before the gospel went to the nations. It was Israel and the Jewish people. And Paul who said nothing can separate me from the love of God, says in Romans chapter seven, uh, 9, verse 1 and 2, that he wished that he could be separated from God for the sake of his kinsmen, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Look, we've got, we've got people walking around saying, we've got to grab hold of the apostolic, we've got to grab hold of the apostolic. Yes, amen. The church is built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, but one apostolic burden that I find missing in most people who have the word apostle attached to their names is a God-given apostolic heart for Israel. Paul, who said, uh, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, had this unceasing sorrow in his heart because of the lostness of his kinsmen, the house of Israel. So, bro, I... I love, I love that you're trying or that, that the Lord has put on your heart to get this word out, not just from me, but from the amazing people at Altar uh, who, are, who, are, who are making room for Israel, making room for Israel. There's one city in the Bible that God calls us to pray for. We should pray for Kannapolis. If you live in Kannapolis, we should pray for Philadelphia. If you live in Philadelphia, you should pray for Delhi if you live in Delhi. But I'm telling you, the one city in Scripture that God says to pray for is a city most often not part of our prayer meetings. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 62, verses 6 and 7. God says to give him no rest. Pound, pound on that door of heaven. Give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in the earth. Israel holds the key to world redemption. Israel holds the key to Jesus coming back and establishing his kingdom reign from Jerusalem. And the church plays a role in that. We must have our eyes open to God's heart for Israel and ask the Lord, what can we do? where Israel is concerned. Wow. You're making my, I'm, I feel like we're on the, the road to Emmaus. <laughs> my, uh, my heart is burning mm. or our hearts not burning within us. Mm. Oh, I love your passion and the truth that you're bringing Scott and um, just, just such an amazing, I I've uh, had the privilege of going to over 25 nations and I, people ask me all the time, like, where's your, favorite place. And I'm like, man, I love Israel. I love oh. Jerusalem. I just love the Galilee area. I love Jerusalem. I mean, oh, it's just an amazing, it's an amazing place. It's uh, amazing promises. Um, there's a, there's a tangible burden that the Holy Spirit is releasing in this hour. You know, it, it's just, we held our conference there in Jerusalem this year. You know, I, I don't know what it was just a couple of months ago. And it was just amazing. You know, we took a tour group and like they literally prayed every night in every hotel that we were in, you know, group of a hundred people, we would tour all day and just would pack into this little room and just cry out. Um, and one of the things that just amazed me is they were crying out for something that had nothing to do with their needs and their prayer requests. And that's Come what on. I feel like true, you know, true intercession yeah. is it's standing in the gap, you know, it's calling on the name of the Lord on behalf 
of the Jewish people. It was just such an amazing, I mean, we had a couple of I like six year old, eight year old, 10 year old, and they're crying. They're getting God's heart for Israel. I mean, it, it was, it was just such an, an amazing time. So as I'm hearing you talk, I'm just like, please, Lord, I know that we've got a, a trip scheduled for next year and would just love to come back and, and be a resource and help uh, pray uh, for the Jewish people. Scott, I wanted to kind of um, maybe shift gears a little bit. I know that you're in constant communication with people on the ground and friends and connections there in Jerusalem and in Israel. What, what are you hearing right now um, of, of the response or the prayer, or the, the financial needs? What, what's happening right now? Bro, my phone is blowing up uh, with nonstop WhatsApp communications from people in Israel. And uh, I've spent the last 12 days or so uh, in tears numerous times, not tears of fear, but tears of just emotional attachment to our friends over there. Many people your age and my age are saying goodbye to their wife and kids and serving in the Israeli army. You know, many, many people our age over there have friends, brothers, sisters, uh, extended family that have been injured or killed or are missing as a result of this diabolical, demonic uh, group that attacked Israel. But in the midst of all of this, I'm finding that so many that I'm connected with in Israel have hope for God to come and to take this absolutely horrific situation that the enemy is, is, is gleeful about and Hamas is gleeful about and turn it into a testimony of God coming, coming through. So I, I have friends that serve in the military uh, and they're, they're with smiles sending me, hey, you know, this is me and my brother, just pray for us. We're, we're in such and such a place in Israel. I've got ministry friends and partners on the ground who are delivering food and flashlights and underwear to soldiers. We're, we're helping bless. There's two messianic families in Israel that actually lost their children uh, wow. in, in battle. Uh, I'm in communication with families over there who lost a daughter. I was on the phone yesterday with a woman whose daughter died at this music festival. She's an unsaved Jewish woman who's just thanking me for the love and care of me reaching out. I'm not something special. Anybody, any normal um, believe, believer, person, caring person would reach out to someone who's lost, you know, a loved one. But what I'm seeing is that there are communities of men and women arising around the nations who are standing with Israel, not that they're waving an Israeli flag saying, wipe out Gaza. No, as a matter of fact, that's not what they're saying. They're crying out, Lord, protect the innocent people of Gaza. Lord, you come and you extract vengeance on your enemies. May Hamas be be done away with and Hezbollah in the north. All of these organizations, these Hamas, uh, these um, Haman type organization that want to see Israel annihilated. And here, within the midst of utter chaos, you've got believers, Jeremiah, in Israel, smiling, believing in God, trusting in God, amidst this horror which has touched everybody, the church around the world is rallying, not because we're having pro-Israel demonstrations, but because we're being the church. And we're saying, though Israel <laughs> needs Jesus, they need Yeshua, their government Made, their government needs Jesus. The American government needs Jesus. It's not the government that we're standing with. It's God's purposes for Israel that we're standing with. I'm reminded of that, that scripture in Zechariah. He who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. So you and I both have children. We love when people look at our children, embrace our children, love our children. Our hearts go out to them. That's where God's heart is right now with how the nations are, are treating Israel. And I believe never before do we as a church have an opportunity to extend the love of Yeshua the Messiah to the lost sheep of the house of Israel by praying for Israel 
and, and by provoking them to jealousy with the love of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's reduced me to tears, bro. I, I'm hearing reports. Scott, you have no idea how I've been blessed by put, put the ministry name in there. I'm hearing it from our ministry, but there's so many ministries who are blessing Israel. And uh, bro, this, this is the time, this is the hour for the church that is ignorant of these mysteries that we talked about in Romans chapter 11. If we don't have a, a place in our hearts for Israel, this is the time where we're called to really ask the Lord, Lord, open up our eyes, open up our hearts, because right now in Israel, they need us. They don't need our machine guns. They don't need our rockets. They need Jesus being manifested through the love of believers around the world who love the God of Israel. Excellent, excellent. Scott, just for, I know that some people are just, they're being stirred by the Holy Spirit right now through our conversation, or maybe don't know a ministry that they can donate to that's actually helping uh, is, Israel, the needs there. I know that your ministry is doing that. If people are watching right now and want to make a donation uh, towards some of the needs in Israel, uh, can they give to your ministry and you guys can do that? Yeah, uh, the Lord, um, I made a vow to the Lord that 100% of every penny that comes in from October 7th until this end, the end of this conflict is over, every donation that comes in is going 100% to Israel. Jeremiah, I've been so blessed with relationships on the ground in Israel, leaders of ministries, families, believers around the country that we get to partner with. And I'm telling them, I'm saying, listen, 100% of what's coming into me is going out. We need reports from you to tell, I where will these funds go if we give them to you? There are ministries around the world, Jer, that raise money for Israel, but unfortunately, some of it never gets into the hands of believers. Uh, Romans 15 talks about Paul, verses 25 to 27, Paul going to the churches of the nations, Macedonia, Achaia, pleased to give an offering to the believers in Jerusalem because they recognize not only do they have a spiritual debt to Israel, but they must also help them in their material needs as well. Together for Israel is committed to giving to the believers in Israel. I just want to encourage those who are giving to any ministry, just be these funds that you're giving are the Lord's funds. You're giving in the name of the Lord. Just make sure, uh, be in contact with these ministry leaders and make sure your funds are not just going into a pot for a later day. Make sure that they're going where you want them to be going, uh, biblically to the believers in Israel. And we are blessed by that. Jer, if you, mind me, if you don't mind me just doing one quick thing, because I know your heart is revival. Think about this. Uh, your heart is Israel, your heart is revival, your, your heart's many, many things, but Israel and revival are, are two things that really, really bless me about you and your heart. But think about revival to the nations in Acts chapter 10, before the gospel goes to the nations of the world, Cornelius has this, this vision, God speaks to him because he was an, he was an, uh, a, a Roman centurion or an Italian, Italian centurion, whatever he was, he wasn't Jewish. And God says, Cornelius, your prayers and your giving have ascended as a memorial to God. He was praying for Israel and he was giving to the needy in Israel. Peter, a day's journey away in Jaffa, has a vision. Sheet comes down from heaven. Talk about like divine visitation. It's like, you go, Peter. You go to this Gentile house. And Peter's like, what are you talking about? That's unlawful to go there. These people are not clean. The Lord says, don't call unclean, what I've called clean. Peter shows up. And what happens in this centurion's house, the house of Cornelius? Revival. Because what did God tell Peter? The same thing he told Cornelius. His prayers and his giving have ascended as a memorial. Cornelius and his family get filled with the Holy Spirit. The same suddenly that happened in Acts 2 with all Jews now happens to this Gentile man. The Jewish people are going, well, what's going on? He's not even Jewish. Revival comes to the nations when we pray and when we give to Israel. I believe it's a biblical paradigm right there in Acts chapter 10. And there are some people that want to 
that want to selfishly say, give and pray, you know, and, and you'll be blessed. No, no, no. I'm just telling you, God notices when we pray. He notices when we give and he notices when we do them in tandem with each other. Where would we be without Cornelius? We have a debt to Cornelius. This man who led the nations in revival. This man was a man who dedicated himself to praying and to giving. And I believe, bro, when we do that, whether it's to altar or TFI or any ministry, whatever, the Lord looks down and the Lord sees and the Lord takes notice. And yeah, we end up getting blessed because we give, but God ends up getting blessed because we give. And I'd, I'd way rather God get blessed by something that I do than I get blessed by something that I do. Yeah, absolutely. So Scott, people are watching right now. What and they can go to your website. We'll drop the link in the comments right now. But what what's the website that they can go and give to to what's happening in Israel and and help? Yeah, beautiful. Uh, our website is together for Israel. F O R together for Israel. I S R A E L dot org. There's a donate button there. We have Instagram together for Israel, Facebook together for Israel. You can follow us. And um, yeah, I am, I'm blown away, Jeremiah, by the hearts of the people in the nations who are using this opportunity to really bless God's heart by blessing the people of Israel. Wonderful. Well, Folks, I really encourage you. Uh, Scott's been a, a friend for a number of years. Uh, we've watched uh, up close and from afar. We've been to Israel with him and just want to encourage you. This is a, a fertile uh, soil to sow into and wow. um, just believing that the Lord will use our time tonight, uh, not only just to enlighten all of us and give us some biblical understanding to what's happening, but that a burden uh, for prayer would increase, but also a burden to give financially uh, to the believers there, to the people there that are in need. I really believe that God is going to bless the offering uh, tonight in uh, incredible ways. So uh, go ahead, click on that link, uh, give to Together for Israel, and uh, let's be a part of what God is doing uh, in these last days. Scott, I would uh, love for you to close us out in, uh, in prayer, if you will. Oh my gosh, I, I'd be honored to. And friends, thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I just really want to encourage you uh, to ask the Lord for his heart, for his people. I'm going to pray. And then I'm just going to close the prayer with uh, God's blessing over you that he uh, told Moses and Aaron to proclaim over his people. I just feel to bless you with that. Many people know the blessing song, but uh, that was written by God himself. And I just want to proclaim that over you. Lord, thank you so much for Jeremiah, for his heart for you, for everyone that's watching. Lord, I pray a blessing over them. Lord, if there's any way where we've fallen short where Israel is concerned, if we've not seen uh, Israel through the lens of the Bible, through your lens as their father, Lord, I just ask you to forgive us. And Lord, we say, Lord, what would you have us to do? How can we be a blessing to your people, Israel? Lord, create within us as we yield to you a greater heart to pray, a greater heart to give, a greater heart to provoke them to jealousy, a, a greater heart to proclaim the truth of the gospel to Israel first. Even as Paul said, he's not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God to salvation to the Jew first. And also to the nations, Lord, may many Jewish people, Father, have their eyes open and bow their knee to their King and their Messiah, Jesus. Bless Altar Global, bless, bless Jeremiah and the team there that are putting out content that provoke people to jealousy. And may Israel benefit, Lord, from, from the, the hearts of those, Lord, that this amazing ministry touches. Lord, we love you and bless you. And even as you spoke this blessing to Moses and Aaron to give over the people of Israel, I'm blessed, Lord, to proclaim it to all those who are watching and listening today. Shalom, the Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace, shalom, wholeness, completeness. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Prince of Peace. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, Scott, and to all of our viewers tonight. Thanks for joining us on the broadcast. Make sure to tag a friend, share this with someone that, you know, maybe send this to your pastor, send this to a spiritual leader. I, I truly believe that there's a lot of silence about this issue because people just don't even have language uh, and don't know where to start. And we're believing that this interview will be used in the hands of the Lord to help get out God's heart and his words for Israel. All right. Have a great night.